Hey guys, in my recent video on Tombstone Radios, I mentioned an iTube, and it occurred to me some of you might not know what an iTube is. Well, here's one from that uh, C. A. Earl Tombstone. It's a 6E5, I believe, RCA Radio Tron. Well, what an iTube is, well, it's sort of like a really, really primitive picture tube, I suppose. There's a central metal electrode surrounded by a sort of a cone disc that's coated with uh, green phosphor. When you apply electricity to this in a certain way, that disc glows and an active element can create a variable sized wedge or arc of darkness in that green disc. Uh, sometimes used as tuning indicators like in a radio and they're also used in test equipment. I'll show you that in a moment. First up though, I'm just going to pop this into my tube tester which can test these eye tubes and show you what they look like. Electrically it's uh, I think like a triode so they actually have three test modes. One just for the basic tube triode operation and then one for the eye closed and one for the eye open. So I've set it up for the eye closed here. Now this tube is kind of weak, so i got to turn off the lights and I hope you'll be able to see this. Commonly these eye tubes from really old radios are quite weak and prices for certain models are, are pretty steep because uh, there aren't a whole lot of these left. So that's with the eye closed, so you just get that just small uh, line out to the left. Now I'll do it with the eye open. I believe it's just a matter of taking one level over down. And there it is open. And you can see how there's a green. Uh, or about, uh, I don't know, three quarters of the disc is now green. But like I said, it is weak. But that's the basic operation. You get a green disc and you get a wedge there that uh, is open or variable amount. Next up, I've got a piece of test equipment that actually uses an eye tube as the indicator. It's one of my favorite pieces of vintage test equipment that I have. And what it is, is a solar capacitor analyze and resistance bridge. Got all the original paperwork, original manual, and uh, just a beautiful control panel, uh, nice screen graphics there. Solar Manufacturing Corporation out of New York. Let's say type CB-1-60. I love the way these two tubes are just exposed right through holes in the cabinet. On the right we've got a type IV rectifier, similar to a type 80, I believe. And on the left is the 6E5 I tube, which is the same type as the one I just showed you in the tester. So what this device can do is measure a capacitor's value, a resistor's value, also check for leakage in a capacitor. Leakage would mean that the capacitor is actually conducting some current when it shouldn't, shouldn't be. And it's something called the percent power factor at 60 cycles. That's only used for electrolytics. It's a, it's a measure of how much power is lost when you use an electrolytic capacitor to filter out hum, I believe, in a power supply. Uh, so, I have gone ahead and hooked up a 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor to some test leads and plug it into the, it says COND, which is sort of for condenser, which is what they used to refer to capacitors as sometimes. There we go. Now the way this works is, first you determine your range, you have three ranges here, C1, C2, C3. Outer range goes from 0.1 around to 70, that would be for your large electrolytics. Then we have 0.001 to 0.7, and then 0.0001 to 0.007. Well this is 0.01, so the, the middle range, C2, is what I've got it on. So what you do is, Turn the light off here and turn these lights off so you can see it. 
So the eye is fully illuminated. You start ro slowly rotating the, uh, the control in the center here until the eye starts to open. And when you have the eye fully open, so that's when you have the right capacitor value. So there it's closed. Get the camera to a good angle here. So now it's starting to open. Just when the feet reaches full deflection right about there. And then you read the value off the uh, the dial here. And it's showing me, let's see, it's 0.005. Point, that'd be six, seven, eight. So it's showing me it's about 0.008. That should be 0.01. But I have not calibrated this, this device yet. These are actually quite accurate because the way these works is it's a Wheatstone bridge and you're comparing the unknown value to a known very precise calibrated value. So in spite of the, the age of this device they're still actually quite accurate once they're calibrated. And the resistance works the same way. So it's kind of a neat way to uh, to indicate a value of something like, instead of using an actual meter to uh, use these old eye tubes. The key to it is get, to get the hang, the hang of the correct values when the eye just hits that maximum open value. You have to kind of rock the dial back and forth and back and forth. It's right about there. One of these days as I, I guess I say far too often, <laughs> but one of these days I do want to pop the cover off this, which I've never done, and restore the electronics and calibrate it, and then I really, really want to refinish this cabinet because it's beautiful dovetail joints all over on this box, and uh, have a really nice piece of test equipment. Now you may be thinking, well, hey, my multimeter measures capacitance, I'll just use that, why mess around with this old stuff? I'll tell you why. When this measure, when you use this to measure leakage, and you use these ranges over here, this will put several hundred volts on the capacitor to see if it breaks down. Your multimeter will not go anywhere near that high. It's only putting out a few volts across your capacitor. So when you're working on vintage equipment that's putting hundreds of volts across capacitors, to see if a, a, an old capacitor is actually good, you really want to put a few hundred volts across it to so really make sure it's. Uh, going to hold up under actual conditions. Yeah, that's all I got for now. Hope you enjoyed this video on iTubes and the solar capacitor and uh, resistance bridge.